Sometimes disasters happen. Sometimes people film things. From a movie stunt gone wrong to a mental bridge collapse. Here are five disasters caught on film. Franz Reichelt was a French tailor who spent his spare time inventing new parachutes. He had success in testing his early inventions, which led to him being known as the Flying Tailor. But his experiments soon ended in tragedy. He was confident that his parachute suit would allow humans to glide through the air. And in 1912, he was allowed to test it from the Eiffel Tower. This is the footage. Someone told me it was the first ever fail video. Paul Mance was a Hollywood stunt pilot. In 1965, he was to fly an aircraft for the film The Flight of the Phoenix. At first, the plane seems to have landed fine, but it soon appears to break apart, ultimately causing the death of Paul Mance. In the days when aviators flew by the seat of their pants, Paul Mance was noted in stunt and speed circles as one of the most daring of his breed. Fifteen years ago, he didn't visualize that he would die on Hollywood location while stunting his home-built plane for a movie production. His craft was deliberately constructed to look jerry-rigged, but it had been certified in an engineering checkout by the Federal Aviation Agency. Mance, semi-retired at 61, was filling in for his injured partner. He starts on a final run. The plane's body cracks, the fuselage collapses. Paul Mance dies as he lived in the midst of a stunt. It is the end of a long career that paralleled the history of aviation itself. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was opened on the 1st of July 1940. Just months later, it dramatically collapsed into the water below. At the moment of collapse, it was still open for people to drive on. Dawn of a fatal day, and the wind begins to speak with a roar that no man can fail to hear. In a 40 mile an hour gale, the center span weaves like a ribbon in a swinging twist that you wouldn't believe possible unless you could see it as you do now. There's an automobile caught on the heaving roadway. The 11,000 ton center span twists and strains the giant cables that support it. Cables of 6,300 wire strands, each 17 inches thick. out of the danger zone, all stricken spectators are driven to safety as the bridge gyrates like a nightmare high above the river, twisting, turning, curling. The lone motorist is forced to abandon the car. He has but a few minutes in which to save himself. Face to face with fate, his destiny hanging in the balance. Will he heed the last warning or perish with the doomed structure? But he saved himself by seconds. No structure of steel and concrete can stand such a strain. Steel girders buckle and giant cables snap like puny threads. There it goes! divided as to the cause of the disaster. Some claim it was the use of solid girders, others differ. But whatever the reason, Tacoma will rebuild. 
This time a bridge that will not provide a super thrill in the news. The Challenger Space Shuttle launched on the 28th of January 1986. 73 seconds into its flight, it was struck by disaster as it broke apart in the sky. I found another piece of footage of the explosion. It's just someone's home video of the event, and their reaction is priceless. Mailman said they just now took off. We should be seeing it this second. There's George. Where did she come up, George? It just took off. Yeah, but where does it come up? I think you need to come down this way. That little tree. Oh, there it goes. I see it in between the trees. Yeah, there it goes. It's coming over the top of the trees, isn't it? Uh-huh. It'll be right over top of those trees. I saw it. There she goes, George. There it goes. That's brighter than usual. Yeah, it is. Well, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right over those trees. Oh, yeah. I saw it when it went through that hole. In the I don't trees. remember it being that... That bright and that big. Look at that. I don't that. either. What was that part? That must have been one of the boosters. Oh, look. There's two. It's going off into two. Hey, is that trouble or not? Huh? They're not having trouble, are they? I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. That's trouble of some kind, George. Huh? That's trouble of some kind, isn't it, or not? I don't know. There it goes again. I think I'll go in and listen. Hey, they, they got troubles. I'm going to go listen. In the 1930s, airship travel was over range. These slow, stupid looking airships would allow normal people to travel without a boat. On May the 6th, 1937, people lost confidence in airships because this was the date of the Hindenburg disaster. The Hindenburg was an airship on course from Germany to America. While landing in New Jersey, it caught fire and the whole ship was soon ablaze. This was largely because the balloon was filled with hydrogen, which is highly flammable, with 36 people dead. This event brought an end to the airship era. German Zeppelin Hindenburg, Queen of the Skies, seen here from a universal newsreel camera plane as it sped over New York to its tragic end at Lakehurst, New Jersey, now lies at the Naval Air Station a twisted mass of metal. Shortly after these pictures were taken, showing the great Skyliner saluting the millions watching it from below on its first trip of the season, the huge craft exploded while docking and blazed to a fiery end, taking the lives of almost half its 99 passengers and crew. Hours late on its trip from Hamburg because of headwinds, the Zeppelin had to ride out a thunderstorm along the Jersey coast before heading for the air station and nosing its way to the mooring mast. The wind is bad and the docking is a ticklish one, but it's all a thrill for the crowd of happy passengers eager to land after their transoceanic trip. Slowly the big ship warps in and the ground crews rush for the mooring lines. In another 10 minutes or so, the great aircraft would have been snugly docked. But as the passengers crowded the windows to watch, a roar and a burst of flame near the big tail fins turned the ship into a flaming inferno. Passengers and crew, the fortunate among them, fell or jumped 
and were dragged to safety before the fiery furnace took their lives. Heroic work by Navy and Army men risking their lives around the white hot skeleton snatched more than one dazed and half-burned passenger from the blazing wreckage. But for the most of those trapped in the incandescent tangle, there was no hope. It's the greatest of miracles that anyone came out of the disaster alive. Seven million cubic feet of inflammable hydrogen gas blazed up in less than a minute. The hundreds of tons of fuel oil burns for an hour or more with its dense black smoke making a pall over the tragic scene. In all the history of air disasters, this is the worst, the most terrible. Hailed as the luxury liner of the air, the Hindenburg's horrible end has shocked the entire world. The pride of the skies reaches its journey's end. Hey, is that trouble or not? Huh? They're not having trouble, are they? That's trouble of some kind, George. That's trouble of some kind, isn't it, or not? There it goes again. I think I'll go in and listen. Hey, they... They got troubles. I'm gonna go listen. 